Rolling. What are we talking about? Are we rolling? We're talking, we talking about, about everything lace. Are we ready? I, we're ready. Are you ready? Welcome back to Off Our Needles. Yep, this episode is called Tools for Success. Success. Get it? Socks. Um, success. So everything's, socks are a bit of a phenomenon right now, don't you think? I love them. I, I think it's mysterious. We're obsessed. Yeah, there's so many ways. There's Okay, there's top down. Yep. There's toe up. Yep. There's um, diff there's several heroes. There's heel flap. Yep. Cut in heel. Fish lips kiss heel. Yeah. Afterthought. We're gonna demystify the sock and help you guys. We're figure gonna talk out about all kinds of fun things, right? Great patterns, yeah. beautiful yarns, all things that you need, and a great craftsy class by Susan B. Anderson. Yeah. Socks are near and dear to our heart. We always have one on the needles, and we'd love to share with you some things that that we know and love about socks. On the needles, I always have one in my purse. I could go get it right now. I know. I'm not even kidding you. Okay, so sitting there. Go get it now. Yes. Like right now. Yes. Okay. Um, shout out to Tommy. He hooked us up with some Dove chocolate, which because we don't get it at home. Socks, chocolate, oh, margaritas. It's what more gonna, do you need, right? Yeah, booze it's in all the cup, good. chocolate in the bowl. Okay. Okay, so here we go. I'm not even kidding. Socks, here we go. It's Kay. like my unicorn though. This is one sock. So you're on your second. I know. Here's the unicorn, my second sock. I so rarely get them done. I'm actually going to have a pair. Pretty, right? Yeah. And so, you know what the fun thing about socks are, is there are so many different ways to knit them yeah. that everybody's funky foot shape is yeah. going to find a sock. Tons of toes, tons of heels, tons of tips on yarns that you might get more wear out of. And so we're going to talk about yeah. all of those things today and some more tools that are just going to make sock knitting more fun I know. and more successful. And we have Susan B. Anderson coming to talk as well. We get to call her. Yeah. Okay, so we're excited to share with you all of our success things today. Absolutely, let's talk socks. Let's do it. Today on Flip This Stitch, we're talking about the Cloud Nine Ballet Slipper by Rebecca Studevant. They're the cutest yep. little flats, sort of like a ballet flat, and we've knit them in two different colors, which is so cute. The sole is one color and the body's another, but there are so many cool techniques in this pattern. There really is. Okay, so I, I read through the pattern at first. I yep. thought, oh, this is going to be fun. There are so many techniques in here that I had never tried that were like what? really so fun. Like what? Uh, the, it's called uh, the German short row where it's the double the double stitch. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then there's the I-cord cast on, which I think is really cool, right? The is that what that is? I-cord cast edging. off. I cord, okay, cast off. off. Oh, this is your last point. You and know, then the cables, right? The beautiful cables? The, 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 the cables you knit across. But I think what made this project so much fun is the yarn. So I think, you know, a yarn can make or break a project. Yeah, I am. I had never tried this yarn, and it is called Cloudborn um, yeah. Highland Natural Kettle. Di no, Wool Bulky. Uh, there's a kettle dyed, and are they both kettle dyed? Uh, this one is. Yes, they're both kettle and dyed. There's some, some semi solids, but it is a high twist Huge. Highland wool yeah. yarn, and this is the bulky weight that we use for this pattern. Okay, so it, first of all, it couldn't have knit up quicker. I had these done in a weekend. Which but makes it a perfect gift. It is the perfect yeah. gift. Because you know what? In the summertime, um, I have air conditioning. Like, I'm lucky enough to have air conditioning. <laughs> so my feet still get chilly in the summertime. Yes. Right? I agree. I'm not kidding you. And it could be menopause. Oh, nice. But uh, my circulation may not be <laughs> as good as it used to. But... Um, these slippers, for me, yeah. will be an all summer long. I just like a cute little slipper too. I don't want the big boot ones that make yeah. me feel like I'm sweating to death. I agree. And I think things that are cute like this uh, are really cute to knit and super fun oh. to give as gifts. And I like to wear them myself too. And it's got a lot of stretch so they fit your foot exactly. They do fit your foot exactly. Yeah, yeah. really beautiful. So yeah, so this was a super fun, I hope you try this project, you guys, even if it's not for yourself, if it's for somebody else as a gift. Yes. Because it was a super fun knit. Yes. And, and a weekend project, right? The yarn was, was gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you guys, so in this pattern, um, they're short rows, they're short row shaping, right? So here. What does that mean? It means that, you know, you, you cast on some of your stitches, but then you've got to, um, 
you know, change the shape of the the sole so it sort of fits your feet, right? Yeah, I see that hourglass shape that right. you're making. Yeah. And so in this pattern, she's doing German short rows, which she's referring to as a double knit stitch. Okay. Okay. So I had never done that before. Yeah. At all. I mean, I know a lot of you may have done it before and it it's really super simple. And let me just tell you, it's just follow word by word in the pattern. Yeah. It's a beautifully written pattern. That's really great. Anyway, I definitely okay, want to. So I'm going to inflip this stitch today. I am going to show you guys um, the, the little German short row shaping uh, on the side of the sock. And um, it's, it's super duper easy. Demystify the yeah. double stitch. So let me show you. Okay. Slip the first stitch purlwise. Pulling up on your working yarn to elongate that stitch into a double stitch. Pull our yarn to the front as if we're going to purl and we're going to follow in pattern to the other end. Now we're going to slip the first stitch and then we're going to pull up the yarn to elongate that stitch into a double stitch. because our next stitch is a knit stitch. We're going to follow in pattern to the end and stop at the first double stitch from the previous row. We're going to continue these double stitches until we have two double stitches at the end of each row. Follow in pattern along the row up until our first double stitch. We are going to insert our needle into both legs of our double stitch and knit it. Working those double stitches together is going to shape our toe and shape our foot sort of like this. Jody, you made this flip that stitch look so easy. It is so easy. This yeah. is a beautifully written pattern, and this German short row was new for me. Yeah. Uh, but it was a it was a great stitch for this pattern, and your feet are going to thank you when you knit this pattern. I'm definitely going to knit this. Yeah. Way to go. Flip that stitch. Super easy. Okay, so. Like we said before, favorite things is one of my favorite things segments. I so uh, we're super excited to talk about this. We're super excited to talk about yarn all the time. All day, all yarn. I know. But this yarn in particular, we're super excited to show you. It is by Cloudborn and it's the Highland Hand Paints Twist yes. Sock Yarn. And what is so fabulous about that? Well, obviously, it's like a hand painted variegated beautiful colors yep. which makes totally funky fun socks which it keeps me going even if you're knitting a vanilla sock which is you know no pattern to stock a net stitch these colors keep you engaged and it's super fun i agree but the really big point that i love about this yarn is it's a tightly twisted fiber and if you've ever knit socks with a yarn yeah and split your stitches or they start doing that thing where you get all the little balls with a pilling that's not your sock having a baby. That is the fabric wearing thin. I've even knit socks um, without a nylon content, but yeah. the, it was twisted so tight that they lasted a long time. How tight was it twisted? So tight, I can't even. <laughs> like, you don't want to know. Okay, so you're a wealth of knowledge. I have a point about the twist. Good. I feel Let like <laughs> I feel like um, twist gives some strength and stability mm -hmm. to your sock as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be that. And I, I wouldn't say flimsy, mm -hmm. but, but the tighter the twist, you're really going to get some extra strength in that sock. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's springy and it makes yes. your stitch definition beautiful, Yeah, which comes into play if you're going to do color knitting or lace or even just a vanilla sock. You want the stitches to look beautiful. Yeah. Um, this yarn does have 80% merino wool, Yeah, which is one of our favorites. I do love a and merino. And 20% of nylon or what do they call it? Polyamide? Polyamide, which yeah. is, I think, another word for a, it's a synthetic fiber that lends strength Absolutely. to your, to whatever you're knitting, yeah. which makes this perfect for socks, but this stuff, you can knit anything with it. Kate, I see mittens, hats, garments. I agree. There isn't yeah. anything you couldn't knit. This is a fingering weight yarn, totally. and you could just insert this into any pattern calling for a fingering weight. I agree. But you know what the fun thing? I always think you can't judge a skein by its cover. Absolutely. You know, like the book, you can't, yes. I mean, I feel like that with yarn because some t oftentimes it's happened to me where I look at a skein and go, yeah, I don't like that so much. 
If it's a variegated type skein, right. because when you skein it up into a cake, when you cake it up, not mm -hmm. skein it, when you take it out of the skein and cake it up, right. it looks completely different. So like this, you'll see, you'll see the skein and you're not sure how that's going to play out, right, yeah. when you're knitting. And then you knit it up and it's something like this. Oh, like you got, right? like who knew, right? I know. So gorgeous. And that's the fun thing what I like about um, either seeing the swatches ahead of time or some people even like to reskein their yarn. It sort of gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So how fun is that so that we can show you guys what some of these are going to knit up like. I love these. And there's also beautiful tonal yeah. solid colors too. So well we, let's put a few of these tonals in with these. Like how, how great is that? Oh if you want to knit a little two colored sock. We're oh. talking socks today but this yarn Honestly, it's just a beautiful fingering weight. You can knit with everything. Oh my God, it's nice like matching. It's like we planned that. Oh my goodness. I mean, we planned that. <laughs> totally planned it. So, a favorite thing Cloudborn um, Highland. Sorry, Cloudboard brand yeah. Highland Superwash Twist Yarn. Absolutely. You are going to love it. I hope you love it as much as we do. Yeah, we love it. Okay, another thing that we want to talk about while we're just on the subject of Cloudborn okay. is the brocade sock. Oh. Okay, so let me remove this so we can show the brocade sock in all its glory. Yep, Tracy. So let's these see. are the brocade socks yep. by Lauren Osborne, which is a gorgeous colorwork pattern. And it's very exciting. These are kind of um, adventurous socks, right? Oh my you can, God. Talk and I love about adventure. Totally. So she's combined two totally high contrast <gasps> jewel tones and made a beautiful, this is called a corrugated ribbing where your knits are one color and your pearls are the other color. And then it goes into this stunning color work and she's even got the sole of the sock and in like slip Look stitches. That. So each, it just a column of um, oh knits and gosh. pearls in each color. I just think these guys are showstoppers. These are amazing. And this kit is available, a patterning kit with with um, the Highland Twist yarn that we just showed. Don't they feel amazing? You know what I say when I see socks like this? I think they're like a work of art. They totally are. I am not a huge color work girl. Not that I'm not a fan of color work. It's not a strength of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not very good at it. I haven't given it a whole lot of yeah. time, so I mean, that's the reason I'm not good at it. But I see something like this brocade sock and I'm like, I would love to knit that. You And you absolutely can. You just take it one stitch at yep. a time, one row at a time. Yeah. And yes, they will take you a little bit longer, but they will be absolutely worth it in the end. And they'll be super warm because when you do color knitting, it's double thick. You've got strands of one color running behind the other. Look at So these that. guys are going to be really toasty if you have a really cold place in the winter. You could almost make this reversible. Yeah. Not that it isn't, but like... Sometimes the inside of color work is just as beautiful. I know. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Anyway, you're right. It's like a double. It's like a slipper sock almost when you knit a yeah, color work. They're definitely thicker yeah. and stronger because you've got two strands of that beautiful Highland Superwash twist yarn going on. So I feel I like these are going to last you a long time. Thank goodness because they take a long time to knit, right? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Heirloom socks. They're beautiful. Okay, so I know as a knitter, yes, your head it just sucks the moisture out. So not only do we live yes. in a brittly cold, dry climate, we are Canadian. Um, Everything just gets so dry, uh, and it's exaggerated with all your use of yes. um, fiber. I find my hands get really dry. Yeah, and so, especially so with we, my knitting. So we have two favorite hand solid hand bars. It's not soap. Yeah, it is solid cream. Yeah, um, targeted for knitters. I mean, obviously anybody can use these. And but with the really great thing about it, number one is the scents. Right. Because her scents are just over the top. Right. And it's so easy to use. I'm just going to try this. See, it's like a little chapstick. It is. Like a little deodorant almost. So the secret, not secret ingredient, but the really wonderful thing in these that make them so rich for your skin is lanolin. They add a lot of lanolin into these. Oh, you guys. And it is called a balm. So it is kind of like thicker and richer. It's the perfect thing for when your hands get dry with your knitting. Who knew I could be a hand model? Jody, you have a whole new career. Nailed it. Love but, it. But um, not greasy. No. Like it's one of those ones where it, it, it gives you a little bit of shine. You smell delicious. I know now. that's chai. It gives mm. you a little bit of shine, but you know what? It's not going to be greasy. It soaks in super quick. Yeah. 
I love so that. So this one is by Tuft Woolens. We love it. And yeah. then there was another one. You know, I wanted to show two because I think, you know, they're they're a bit different. Um, but look at this, Yeah, you guys. this one is a different style. Okay. So this one's actually called a lotion bar. Yep. And it's by Love and Leche. Don't we love that? Yeah. Look how cute the packaging yeah. is. And I love the scent in this one. It's called Lemongrass. But and it's an all-natural body lotion in a bar, in a jar. Look at the a top. A bar in a jar. Look at the top. Look how beautiful it is. You guys. So that's two sheep. Oh my it's gosh, all molded, it's so but it is really okay, lovely. So take this, that out. I want to show something one, else. This one you just go like this. Right? Totally. And you sort of warm it in your oh, hands. Stop. Stop. This, is lemongrass. this lemongrass. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so um, there's a couple ways that you can purchase this Love and Leche bar. Mm -hmm. um, this was a spring kit, and I wanted to show that because this is a fairly new product for her. So in it, you'll receive one of the. Um, this one happens to be citrus and rosemary. That's the lotion bar. Yeah, yeah. it's again, it's the same one that we just showed. Oh, but look, it's oh, like a she's mommy got another and a baby. another mold. Gosh, these are works of art. Yeah, these are hand poured. I know, they're yeah. so beautiful. But along with that, you get this anywhere balm. So I just thought that was an added extra. So little little chapstick. That's a perfect one to pop in your purse. I agree. Or your project bag with your knitting. I agree. Yeah. But these lotion bars, you guys. You are going to uh, love these lotions. Oh. I think it's a favorite thing. Who likes dry skin? Nobody, right? Favorite thing. So favorite thing, lotion bars. Tuft Woolens and Love & Leche. We yeah. love them. Yeah. Okay, so I do, like we love knitting socks. All kinds of socks. Yeah. Short socks, long socks. There's a way that of knitting socks that's a little bit different than buying a cake of yarn. And it's called a sock blank. And a lot what? of I know. What? You had me at sock. Now, what's a sock <laughs> blank? Um, a sock blank is a knitted rectangle of fabric. It's usually a... Um, Gosh, look at the colors. Sometimes you can get it knit with one strand of yarn, sometimes two. But this one is actually knit in one strand of... Continuous strand of yarn. And you just grab the end of it and cast it on and you unravel the yarn as you knit. So it's kind of fabulous. You see the picture that's been painted on here, and then you watch it appear in your sock as sort of a speckly, sometimes stripey pattern, yep. sometimes not. But so many indie dyers have taken it upon themselves just to create these incredible works of art. And all we want to do is unravel them and make knit socks, right? Okay, so this one was one that this you is, could see. This one's called Lemons, and this one was by Gail's Art. Yes, she's amazing. Um, she was the first one I think of when I think of sock blanks. Me too, especially the arty ones with all the pictures. Yeah. She's the first one I, that I had seen. So this one was called Lemon. So you can see there's lots of abstract to it, but but she's calling this Lemons because she is stenciled on lemons here. Mm -hmm. So Tracy has a, a very different one to show you. This one is Query Fiber, and I don't know how they do theirs, but look at the difference. It was so funny when we got this. Tracy was trying to think, how do they do this? How do they do that? And so, I mean, you can use all kinds of artistic I mean, techniques. Come on. I'm not artistic like that, but I'm dying to unravel this and see what it's going to look like in a fabric. So that's so really fun. What you could do is you could unravel it and cake it up. You could cake if, it up. If it makes you feel better to have a cake of yarn, you can absolutely pre-wind it. Yeah. But for me, it was way more fun to knit just unraveling as I went. Your yarn is a little bit kinky. It's a little bit kinky. Yeah, so you're going to knit with a yarn that's a tiny bit kinky. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't change your gauge. It doesn't, you know, once you wash it, they all flatten out. Yeah. But let's just show a quick couple of techniques that okay. people are using. So I have to show this because when I think of, of um, sock blanks when it comes to, um, you know, like pictures Artistic. or graphics, yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't think of anybody else but Andre Sunitz. Yeah, she's doing an amazing job with her stuff. She's doing an amazing job. So this is Andre Sunitz and this is one example. I mean, could this not be groovier? I know I love this. She, this is going to be amazing. She is a true artist, and I can't tell you the sock blanks that she has done. I know. She is, I, I mean, I could go she's on and super on. Duper, I could go on and on about any of these She's an amazing desires. artist, and she's just chosen to use um, oh. yarn as her palette, and she paints, you paint right on it. So you that's kind of cool. Here's an example of a abstract one yeah. where it's more um, speckled and tonaled and sort of just splashing on colors, I think. And this one is from Stranded, Stranded Dye Works. Yeah. And this one is her Flamingo Legs colorway, which 
I'm dying to Kate, knit. so um, she's a UK dyer. Yes. And she is so funny, but she came up with this, um, this flamingo colorway. She does it in a skein of yarn also, yeah. but then she translated it into a sock blank. The colors? It used to be difficult to find sock blanks, Indie dyers are doing them all the time now. I know. And actually, Amy, who is Stranded Dye Works, she, she does pretty much all her colorways on a sock blank. Okay, so how fun is that? It's sort of like a deconstructed skein of yarn. It is. You know, splash. And I mean, just because we call them sock blanks, you can absolutely knit anything you want out of this. You can right. throw this in a shawl, you can make a hat, you can make mittens. It's just another fun way to play with yarn. Um, I think mine are all going to be socks, though. Totally. Yeah. So sock blanks, favorite Th thing. That's right. And yep. we were talking about how wiggly the yarn is. Yeah. When you knit from a sock blank, one way to get rid of that wiggly yarn is to use a sock blocker when you're done. Let's do that. So sock blockers, they're awesome. They come in multiple sizes. Actually, we can just stack them like that. So these are small, medium, and large. Small, medium, and large. They're just a form that you get the size that fits your foot. Yeah. And you wash your sock, and when it's damp, you pull the sock right onto here. You want to show us how you do that? Okay. And it really does help smooth out the stitches, and when the sock is dry, it comes off the blocker looking absolutely perfect. Yeah, just like that. So you just slip it on like that, and you know, because it's the size that you want, it fits your sock perfectly. Yeah. And when the sock is wet, it, you know, it, as it dries, it forms to the sock form. Yeah. So it makes a really pretty sock. Well, and we talked about, um, we, when we talk about lace, we always say how important it is to make sure that you block your lace. Mm -hmm. There is a, a, I mean, a bazillion lace sock patterns. Right. And, and, and same with true to color work is when you finish your sock, it's not to its ultimate glory until you've blocked it and, and put it on a blocker somehow. I mean, if it's until so you've washed it and I put agree, it on a blocker. I agree. It smooths out the stitches and makes everything look gorgeous. You know, and when the sock is dry, they look perfect and beautiful. It shows off your hard work. They really, really. do. So pretend yeah. that was wet and literally it comes off in that shape. It does. Right? Sock blockers are super fun. So I, I have a pair for every size in my family. I've got one for my husband's big feet and yeah. one for my own and I definitely use them. You know what is fun in my office? I have a sock on display. Like if just I'm hanging? Ever, just hanging. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. you can just hang it like that. Yeah. And it looks actually really cute in it my is. office space. Anyway. It is. Just so sock little... blockers are definitely one of my favorite things. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so should we go over our favorite things? Yes, we, talked we have about so a few. many. Yeah. So first of all, we talked about the Cloudboard brand, Highland Superwash Twist Yarn. Yes. And we had our beautiful um, Love & Leche Bar and Tough Woolens Lotion Balm. Okay. And we had sock blanks that we love. And of course, the beautiful brocade sock pattern and kit that you can get right here on Craftsy. And then sock Blockers. Sock blockers. Treat yourself to some sock blockers. They, you know, if you put all that effort into your sock knitting, these guys kind of glam it up and they make them look stunning when you're done. So we are so extremely lucky to be able to bring you guys a chat with Susan B. Anderson today. So Susan is one of our favorite sock gals. She, Absolutely. Yeah, she is, I think, the sock queen. Is that, and I think we could call her that. Sure, I do. Why she, not? She's got our favorite sock recipe that I use. It's my go-to sock one. And she's got several craftsy classes. Absolutely. You may yeah. know Susan from so many places. She's got her award-winning blog, of course, and all of her beautiful books. She's got the Itty Bitty series that I love so much, and the Kids Knitting Workshop, and the Topsy yeah. Turvy Toys. Um, and we just feel so lucky that Susan gets to, or we're going to, we get to talk to Susan today. Yeah. And... Not only that, but now she's a, a wool company owner. She is. Oh my gosh, yeah. the Barrett Wool Co. Oh my gosh, I have some of that yarn and it's yeah. unbelievable. So we get to talk to Susan about all of these things today. So because we think she's our queen of socks, yes. we would thought we would talk to Sue all things socks. Okay. Right? Okay. Well, I'm so excited. So Susan, hello and welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you two? We are so good. Thank you so much for coming to talk socks with us today. My pleasure. I, I, you know, a few years ago on your blog, you published your How I Make My Socks <laughs> recipe. And that just kind of went crazy, didn't it? People went nuts for that. Oh, my gosh. That pattern. It's not, well, it's not even like a fully written pattern, it's more just kind of a recipe. Yeah. And um, the reason I put that on my blog is because 
I get a lot of socks. I always have socks on the go. And so I post most of these socks, and then I would have people writing me individual questions. I'm not kidding. I probably got just hundreds of questions about how I made my socks that I would post pictures of. And so finally I thought I was answering all these individual questions, and I thought, I'm just going to put the recipe out there, and then people can... Stop bugging yeah, have fun with it on their own. <laughs> and it has, I think there are thousands of projects, and I don't know. I hear about that um, free recipe more, probably, probably more than anything else I've ever done, I think. I yeah, know. It's, it's, an, it's amazing. And you did the worsted weight version and the men's weight version. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just, think, I just think that's an amazing resource for someone that's maybe never knit socks before. So we were trying <laughs> to decide today, what is it about sock knitting? Why do we get so... It just seems almost like a crazy, like obsessive. What's so great about knitting your own hand knit socks? Well, you know, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind on why socks are so popular is just the yarn. I'm sure you've already talked about this, but the yarn possibilities are endless. They're inspiring, they're motivating, it's just fun. Um, there's so many fantastic indie dyers out there. There are fantastic commercial yarns that are available that are really hard wearing, but so beautifully dyed and fun to knit. And um, there's something just so satisfying about it. Uh, other things about socks that I think are so great are, well, first of all, it's a small, portable project. You can take it anywhere, you can travel with it have it with you tucked in your bag or your purse, you know, while you're standing in line. It's just the most portable, little, compact, perfect project to take with you. Um, <clears throat> and then the, uh, there are a couple other things, too. The pattern, you know, if you get a simple pattern that you like and you knit over and over again, it's just memorizable. So once you knit a pair of socks, you basically have the pattern memorized and it's so easy, and you don't have to think about it. It's just um, you know, an automatic pilot type uh, project that is it's really simple. And then um, it's easy for taking a place where you are socializing. If you are in a group and people are chatting away, you don't want to pay too much attention. So, um, <clears throat> and I think really best of all, they're just so practical. It's something in your wardrobe that you wear every single day and um, I for example I wear a lot of just neutral colors I dress very simply in my day-to-day -day life and well in every probably everywhere I go kind of life and it's really fun to have kind of these fun bright colored striped or patterned socks um, you know it's just something kind of a, a fun little bright spot in your wardrobe to kind of spice things up a little bit so um, and I make great gifts. I mean, I could go on. I, I know. It's I can just, talk socks literally all day yeah. long. Jody and I have been knitting your smooth operator sock like crazy. We <laughs> absolutely love it. And it's so cool with striping yarn because it just seems to, you know, that afterthought heel really shows it off so well. Can you tell us a little bit about how that, because it's really, I feel like it's a workshop pattern. It, I do too. It, there's so many beautiful pictures and you really take everybody by the hand from start to finish yeah. for these cool techniques. I could, can't say enough, Susan, about that one. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love that pattern. I started, um, well, for my crafty class I did on socks, I did a toe up um, crafty class, and I started really exploring for that class all sorts of heels, and I really and truly fell in love with the after spot heel. And like you said, it's especially wonderful for striping socks. Yeah. Because it makes this kind of cool striping pattern. But um, yeah, so that, that sock, the smooth operator sock pattern, um, I wanted to do a top down, a cough down pattern um, with this afterthought heel. And I, and I had done afterthought heels before, you know, written by other people, and of course I tried it, and it didn't quite fit the way I wanted it to, and um, so what I did is I made some modifications that worked really well for me, and I just really wanted to share those with other people, and then I also, there's kind of also this tricky spot in an afterthought heel on um, closing up the holes on the side yes. when you pick up the heel, and so I had some various tips and recommendations on how to... Um, 
get rid of that in a simple, easy way, that, yeah. that little hole. And then I also did some different types of decreases for the heel that give um, a bit of a different appearance so that the sock is really very, very smooth looking. That's why I called it the smooth operator sock. It doesn't have any big bars of decreases. It's just like one little simple line out going along the side of the heel there. So, um, yeah, that pattern has been just outrageously successful, and it's still at coming up on the one-year anniversary, I think, of when I published that, maybe last that? summer, I published Correct. that pattern, wow. and um, it's still just selling, like, just crazy, I think, um, partly because of your <laughs> announcement yeah. of it, so thank you very much for that. Well, <laughs> really nice. it, it's a we... Fun well, we do absolutely love it, but honestly, it's 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 amazing. So thank you so much for that one. I learned so many things because I do love the look of an afterthought heel, but I have the same troubles in the corners. Yeah, and oh, yeah. I can't even say how much I love what you changed and modified. It fits I, me perfectly. I completely agree. So so we met. We actually were were lucky enough to meet Sue in person last this past fall at at a Knit City event in Vancouver, and we ended up spending a ton of time with Sue. I miss going for Vietnamese food with you. Sue, <laughs> it's fun. I have to say, well, <laughs> I didn't know that was it. We were lucky that was a good restaurant. We were lucky. So, <laughs> just to give you a bit of reference, we were staying at a hotel that was Kitty Cross from the convention center where the event was, and there was nothing around. And you know, you're back and forth really quick. You don't have a ton of time. So we literally ate Vietnamese food all weekend from this one. Yeah, you're. We're lucky it was good, weren't and, we? And I've never had it since since then. So. I haven't either. It was kind of our special thing. So every time I drive by a Vietnamese restaurant, I think of, of Sue and Tracy. I and, do too. Yeah, I do too. Sue, we were oh, we're so Susan. excited to have you here and chatting all things socks. I don't think it would be a sock episode without Susan Absolutely. and her wisdom when it comes to socks. So Sue, thank you so much for having uh, time for us today. Yeah, this has been amazing. Yeah. It's been a real treat just to pick your brain about all things socks because yeah. um, they're little projects, but there's so many fun things going on in them. So yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Have a great time. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Sue. Bye. Okay, so that was it. Our socks, cetera. No, what was it? Socks, success. success. We hope that we have provided you with information to make your sock knitting experience a success. Absolutely. I wonder how many times we can get that in there. Success, that's a really <laughs> tough one to say a few times fast. Yeah, so if there's anything um, that you've seen in this show, um, there's always the description box below. Don't forget, there's a ton of information there as far as you know, links to the pa any patterns we've talked about, um, any information that you wanna find out that we talked about on this episode, you'll find in the description box. As well as box. Susan's Toe Up Sock class, which is amazing. Yeah. I took it myself, absolutely loved it. Um, so you're right, you guys, this has been a successful day, I feel like, oh here God. at Off Our Needles. How many times can we do that? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Until next time, you guys, happy knitting, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.